Hi, everybody, and welcome to this lesson on discovering your network infrastructure through the Migration Hub. So there are a few things that we need to do before we go ahead and get started with discovering our network infrastructure. So the first thing we need to do is in the Windows Server, we need to modify the firewall to allow a certain port, port number 443. To go through that is what the agent uses to communicate. So that's one of the things that we need to do uh, and ensure that our firewall has that port open. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I am working on a Windows, 2000, uh, Windows 2019 uh, or 16 server um, in terms of demonstrating how we can discover the network infrastructure and have it migrated to the AWS environment. So as you guys can see, I have a virtual machine open that has a Windows 2019 server running on it. Uh, it's, it's a standard edition uh, evaluation version, but that does not make a difference. Uh, the only difference is, is the Hyper-V is not available in the eval version, and especially if you are working in a virtual machine. Uh, nonetheless, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new rule in the firewall that is going to allow the TCP port, which I just mentioned, to go through, uh, just so the agent can work properly. So I'm going to go ahead and create a custom role and uh, click on Next. I want to apply that for all programs, and the protocol type that I want is specifically TCP. Port number, I can allow all ports, but again, that would be a security no-no. So I'm going to specify a certain port, uh, specifically 443, and go ahead and click on Next. Which local IP addresses does this rule apply for? I'm just going to do go uh, do all uh, for the purposes of uh, this demonstration. But for in production environments and for security purposes, you would want to make sure that you only allow certain IP addresses uh, in and out. But since this is a demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and allow all, and I want to make sure that I allow this connection to go through. And uh, I'm going to give it a name. And go ahead and click on Finish. There we go. So now that we have our firewall rule created, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Now, the next part is I want to install a Visual C Plus installation just so the network agent can run. So I've, as you guys can see, I've navigated to the download center uh, in Microsoft. And what I want to download is the VC REDIST x86. Uh, you want to make sure that it's the x86 version and not the x64, uh, regardless of what architecture you're working on. Even if you have a 64-bit OS that you're working in, uh, make sure you download the x86 just because the network discovery agent operates specifically with the x86 architecture. So you want to make sure that you download the x86 and not the x64, uh, regardless of what architecture you are operating in. So I'm going to download this file. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to navigate to my AWS console. And I'm going to go ahead and go into IAM, because I need to create a user account that has credentials. So I'm going to go to users. I'm going to go ahead and add a new user since I don't have any created at this point in time. I'm going to call it agent discovery for the purposes of this demonstration. I want to make sure they have programmatic access. And just for the sake of it, I'm also going to allow the management console access, but you can get by with only programmatic access if you want. Let me just change the display settings of this virtual machine real quick so you guys can see the entire screen. I'm just going to change the resolution to, uh, let's go with 1600 by 1200. There we go. Let me go back into my console. Now you, should, now you guys should be able to see the entire screen. There we go. So now you can see all the options. So as you guys can see, I've selected programmatic access. Uh, and for the sake of it, uh, the console access, I'm just going to give it a, a password for logging in. And just uncheck this box. We don't need to have them create a new user. Now, as for the permissions, we want to make sure that we attach existing policies with this user just so the discovery agent has the proper permissions to interact with your AWS environment. So what we want to do 
is we want to click on attach existing policies and instead of scrolling through, I'm just going to go ahead and search for AWS application discovery. There we go. So we have two options. Uh, so we're going to select both the options and make sure that the user is added into these policies. Go ahead and click on next. If you want to add tags, you're more than welcome to, but I'm just going to go ahead and create the user. There we go. Uh, now, a couple of things we want to do is we want to make sure we note down the access key and we note down the secret access key. They will be utilized by the discovery agent for logging in and inter interacting with your AWS environment. So I'm just going to quickly copy these into Notepad just so I have them for reference. So that's the access ID. And I'm also going to uh, copy the secret access key. Make sure you do copy this because once you get out of this screen, you will not be able to see the secret access ID again. So you'll have to create a new user account. So make sure you note these down for programmatic access. So now that we have those two prereqs done, we have the um, Visual Sheep C++ agent downloaded, and we also have the user account created in IAM. Next thing, I'm gonna go ahead, go on and head out over to the Migration Hub. I'm going to click on Discover because I want to discover my network infrastructure. Either one, we can click on the yellow button or here. We want to use the discovery tools which are provided by AWS in order to do the network discovery. Again, three different options we have. I'm going to go ahead and do the agent for Windows and it's going to download that agent on my in my download section or on my desktop, depends on where you go ahead and save it. So that's the third step. So again, uh, going on with the first step was uh, downloading that Visual C++. Next one was creating the IAM user for the agent to have discovery. And then lastly is downloading the discovery agent to get that up and running and started. There we go. So now we have both those items downloaded in my desktop. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Next, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the command prompt. And I'm going to go ahead and install the AWS Discovery Agent MSI with this code. And again, the key ID and the key secret you guys see here is this copy and paste it from my notepad, which I saved. Oh, one thing I did forget is obviously we have to install the Visual C++ distributor files before we go ahead and install the agent. So I'm just going to quickly double click on that. It's a pretty quick install. And once that is done, that's when we can run the, that's when we can run this command again uh, to install the discovery agent. It's again, very simple and quick process to install the discovery agent. There we go. So once that's installed, we're gonna go ahead and click on finish. Now when that's done, we're gonna go into data collectors because obviously we want to collect the data of our infrastructure or of our servers. We're gonna click on the agents tab. And here we see that agent is automatically populated in my dashboard. You guys can see the agent ID, the host name, uh, the collection, the health, and so on. So what we want to do is start the data collection. And here we have different options for, not different options, we have one option for a data collection. We can enable the data exploration in Amazon Athena. So let's say you have a large footprint in terms of servers and applications. We can do that if you want to use the powerful querying of Amazon Athena. So we're gonna go ahead and get that agent started so the data collection can happen properly. If I go back into my server manager, you guys can see those two services are automatically started. The AWS discovery update and the discovery agent have been started on my server. And my server is also populated or the discovery agent is also populated in my migration hub. You guys can see the status is healthy. And once it's, once it's started, you guys will notice that the servers will start being populated in the server section. At this point in time, I only have one server in my virtual machine. That's why only one is showing up. But if you had 10, 50, or 100, all of them would slowly start showing up as the agent started starts to discover the various infrastructure that you have within your environment. And here it populates all of the detailed information about your server, 
To verify, we can see that the IP addresses of what's in my AWS dashboard and what's actually the IP address of my server do actually match, which is 10.0.2.15, just so we can confirm that it is indeed the same server that the discovery agent has discovered. We can see the cores, the CPUs, the disks, so a very detailed information. Now, for more detailed information, we can go on to Amazon Athena in our dashboard. And here we can see that there's already been a database that's been created for us in terms of our server. We can run different queries uh, to query the data about our servers, about our infrastructure, to get more detailed information about what we have and how we can migrate that to AWS. So that's essentially what the discovery agent actually entails in terms of discovering what you have on your network and how you can get that populated and moved on over to AWS, which is the next step, is migrating this information or this server into AWS.